Hello. Today I'm going to watch a movie that has been quite a while since I uh, previously watched it until my last uh, viewing of it. And it's a movie that somebody asked about if I'd ever <clears throat> watch or rewatch and talk about it. And that is um, Bram Stoker's Dracula, directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Um, and it's one of the movies he has directed, which he has not, uh, or one of the few that he has directed that he has not actually, uh, uh, written. He did produce it, though, but, uh, you know, a lot of movies that, uh, Coppola directs, he generally writes, so. It's interesting how he, uh, uh, decided to you know, not have a hand in the writing of this, but um, then again, this project primarily uh, came as a result of one other writer uh, who suggested that uh, the two of them work on this because she was originally going to be in The Godfather 3 before uh, uh, Coppola cast uh, uh, his daughter in the role. And he did that because she dropped out, like, literally the last minute before they actually were to shoot Godfather 3. And she did Edward Scissorhands. And he obviously was not happy at all because they did all this preparation, finally found somebody to be married and Godfather 3. And then she just went and decided to do another movie. So to try to mend things together, they, or whatever she... Uh, chose this movie as a project for them to do and of course uh, this film stars Gary Oldman as Count Dracula went on a writer as uh, Mina and Elisabetta who was Dracula's wife before he before she died after reading now or hearing that he died in battle and he comes back rebukes God and uh uh <clears throat> becomes you know count dracula as we all know um i'm not really going to talk about the overall story because i'm pretty sure at some point everybody has seen some version of dracula even if it's not this particular story or this particular film they know the gist of it at, at the very least you know even if you've never read the book you Again, I've probably seen like at least like the Universal Monster film uh, with Bela Lugosi, um, and because uh, that one, in many ways, is probably the most famous version of the character on film. Just Bela Lugosi's look and voice and everything. So many people would then go to mimic that version. Uh, even though he doesn't have a Transylvanian accent, just though his performance and everything is just uh, really top-notch. Christopher Lee played the character ten times. You know, in many ways, you could say he has the best... Uh, the second best known person to play the character due to the fact that he... Um, played him so many times and he pretty much became synonymous with that character to the point where the final time he played him he just was tired and didn't want to ever play the character again because he just you know it was into much of a challenge after a while you know so yeah and if I were to recall cor correctly the last movie he did he didn't even say anything he just went out. <sighs> The whole movie because he just hated the dialogue he had that it was just so garbage that he'll just hiss that's it that's it that's it he, he will do nothing but hiss in terms of him actually s supposed to speak um but you know this is a film that actually does follow the book fairly well i actually many years ago i got little books like you know that thick and like that tall and everything that of the entirety of uh <clears throat> both dracula and frankenstein and i remember reading those books and granted the print was fairly small but 
that was fine, but I remember reading those, and I think I got them at maybe Walden's Bookstore, you know, back when that was a thing. <laughs> and they weren't too expensive, so I remember reading those, and I wish I had them where I could just easily access uh, have them accessible, but I think they're downstairs in some box, and yeah. A lot of boxes downstairs anyway you know so I've read the book and this is one of the most uh, uh, faithful um, I remember James Rolfe uh, he's best known for the angry video game nerd he went through like a list of m uh, many Dracula films you know from like, I believe he even counted Nosferatu because <clears throat> that was a film at what is Dracula, but, you know, for legal reasons, it, it wasn't Dracula, because the guy was Count Orlok. Completely different, despite the story being the, pretty much the same. Anyway, he did a list of the various uh, films uh, based on Dracula. And uh, this came at number two. The only one that became was seen as more faithful was... Um, uh, uh, the 1974 film that was made for TV with um, Jack Palance as Dracula. Uh, in terms of accuracy, that was uh, seen as the most accurate of them all. But this was number two. And uh, Gary Oldman's performance um, is amazing. I mean, granted... Gary Oldman is pretty much great in everything he does. Even if a movie or project he's in that, you know, isn't good, he at least is like one of the very few with perhaps only redeeming quality of said film or show or whatever that he might have ever appeared on. Um, but for the most part, overall, yeah, this was a very good film. Um... It follows the story very well. Characters are there. Renfield was a uh, was very good. Um, Anthony Hopkins as Van Helsing was great. Keanu Reeves, um, yeah, his accent isn't very good, and many people do criticize his performance. Um, I remember reading how for Reeves it was like, you know, he has scenes with Gary Oldman and. Anthony Hopkins and having to interact with those two quite a bit is going to make him very nervous. And so in some instances, he's not very, you know, he's not uh, great. All that, or at least all that great. And also Coppola said, you know, for him, he wanted to perfect the British accent, which he did not do. I don't know whether he had not enough time to do so or what it was, but he didn't perfect it and so you know he just wasn't able to do that and I guess in Coppola's uh, thought that was what made his performance not so great Rewatching this again it isn't a great performance but it's not horrendous either you know there are worse performances out there um but yeah, I could see perhaps being nervous with at least two people that he listed, you know, Gary Oldman and Anthony Hopkins, you know, having to act alongside those two, you know, that could definitely make one nervous. But I think he does a fine job. Gary always is in here. Uh, uh, Billy Campbell. But yeah, this was a very good film. Um, again, it, it, it's it's very good that how um, you know they try to be as accurate as possible. Obviously, there are uh, uh, you know there are absolutely uh, liberties taken here and there, but for the most part, it's very good. You know, uh, Tom Waits was a uh, Renfield and he was 
quite something. Renfield's always an interesting character. Um, you know, he's institutionalized and everything, so... <clears throat> Very, uh, very good adaptation. Um, as with all the stuff that Coppola does, and adapting books, he, it's Bram Stoker's Dracula. So, you know, not Francis Ford Coppola's, though, depending on who you uh, ask, it probably should say Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula. Because, you know, there are certain things omitted. And, of course, this is a two-hour film. So, obviously, everything in the book is not going to be uh, included. Though there are deleted scenes. And this is over 30 minutes of uh, newly unearthed deleted scenes. Um, and this has a... This DVD has a introduction... Uh, watch Bram Stoker's Dracula with Francis Coppola and a full-length director's commentary. And there are four documentaries. Uh, the Blood is the Life, Making of Dracula, Costumes are the Sets, Design, uh, Eko uh, Ishuka, In Camera, the Naive uh, Visual Effects of Dracula, Method and the Madness, Visualizing Dracula, you know, the sets and the designs of you know, the period, uh, all that looks great. And the visuals are excellent and fantastic, you know. Maybe there might be certain things in terms of some visual effects that might be considered obviously dated because this is from 1992. Um, but for the most part, it's a very good film. It's a very excellently, you know, <clears throat> uh, a great visual film. It's a film... That looks great, and it's one that is not at all a bad adaptation. Um, a perfect one? No, but for what the film uh, contains in the final uh, version of it, it's very good. Um, you know... There have been various versions of uh, Coppola's films where he puts back a bunch of stuff and uh, uh, in some cases rearranges things like what happened when he made uh, The Godfather Code of the Death of Michael Corleone. So we have a shorter version of Godfather 3. <clears throat> um, but this is a very good film. Um, may not be the most accurate version in terms of uh, faithful to the book, but it is good. It's not a bad film at all. Um, uh, that would say Gary Oldman's performance. You know, I think in in many ways uh, will probably be my favorite uh, performance of Dracula. Um, obviously, Bela Lugosi is iconic. Christopher Lee is great, but you know, and it could also be my uh, bias in that uh, Oldman is my favorite actor of all time. So, I guess for me that might that is something to keep in mind. But even then, even without biases from the various uh, films I have seen of Dracula. Um, Oldman's performance is, uh, has always been my be favorite, um, might even be the best, but from what I've seen, but there are others that, you know, uh, <clears throat> there are many versions of Dracula, I haven't seen every single one, but I've seen a good amount, but, but yeah, Obviously, including all ten version or all ten films that Christopher Lee did, which you know those Hammer films were. Uh, they are something I need to own those movies, but uh, here in America, that's like the uh, copyright uh, is owned. Like the different studios own 
different films of that franchise and um and, and some uh places do or some home video uh companies do have multiple versions of those films and have released them but it'd be nice to have them all in big one big set but yeah re-watching this film was really good well, it was really great i guess i should say um yeah, and then this film won three Academy Awards, Best Costume Design, Best Makeup, and Best Sound Effects Editing. <clears throat> and of course, you know, the that hair of that Gary Oldman has to wear when he's like, you know, old man Dracula has been made fun of uh, quite a bit. And... Um, and it is a bit, it is fairly goofy, I should say, yeah. Um, but I will say it is a, iconic in its own right, so for whatever faults or, or things you could say about that, you can't say it's not a recognizable look for Dracula, so uh, there is that. Um, but yeah, I enjoy this film for what it is. Uh, more faithful to the book than other versions of the film so there is that some people do care about accuracy to uh, source material and this is one that is fairly faithful um, of course there are deleted scenes so perhaps you know watching those you know you'll be able to be like oh well if these were actually some of these were included this would be more faithful but for what is omitted and there you know, it's not seen as faithful um, uh, by some. Um, and also thinking back about, look, that Dracula, you know, faithful adaptation uh, book, which the most is accurate. Um, I don't know if James Rolfe did talk about You know, Nosferatu or not, but it wouldn't, I, I just kind of think he would, just because, you know, why not? Why not include it? Because it is Dracula, basically, just changed the uh, names and everything, because, you know, didn't have the rights to make an actual adaptation straight up uh, for Dracula, so they had to, you know, call it Nosferatu. Plus, I think it's a good time to watch this because, you know, Nosferatu, uh, directed by Robert Eggers, is coming out uh, Christmas. So, you know, what a great Christmas film to watch. You know, Nosferatu about, uh, you know, a vampire coming to suck blood and uh, everything and and uh, wreak havoc and all that good stuff. Uh, it, it should be good. Uh, or hopefully it will be at least you know uh, Robert Eggers has been a very good filmmaker I've enjoyed his films quite a bit so I hope he continues to make very good uh, films this is a good film obviously by Coppola so yeah that's all I really have to say about this film I enjoy it I didn't really go into the plot because again People basically know Dracula, uh, either from reading the book or watching the movies or various movies, uh, or maybe just in general. Some people just talk about the character and the gist of uh, the film and book because you know it's a it's a very well known story, so uh, people are bound to have heard about it one way or another. So. That's my thoughts on this film. I enjoy it. Might not be the most faithful book or faithful adaptation of the book, but, you know, sometimes uh, when adapting a book, there are certain things uh, that are good to be, you know, either uh, left out entirely or changed. Um, it would be interesting to see a pretty faithful uh, adaptation from beginning to end with the book, though. Perhaps for some, it's like if it's too accurate, then that could be perhaps seen as a bad thing. Because, you know, maybe you don't want to, we don't need to 
include everything. Um, and that's always something, uh, especially these days, that people kind of have to keep in mind if when I, adapting a book to a film. Uh, and also some things might not translate well. So that's another reason why certain things could be left out entirely like it wasn't even written so it wasn't even something like that yeah, cut for time or whatever it was like it was just like how to do that or to present that on screen you know depending on the book not necessarily dracula but it's like you know like uh, the film uh, a film a version of it could never include a particular scene even though i've never read it i have uh, i know enough about the book where it's like i read it without ever actually reading it a lot of people i know <clears throat> have actually read the book and there is a particular scene with the kids in the sewer that could never be done no matter what it's just no uh, you probably know what i'm talking about but again there could be certain things when adapting uh, books that's like yeah no this can't be on film for one reason or another um, so maybe you know I'd have to reread um, uh, Dracula again but when watching this I'm like uh, many things from the book did come back to me so you know maybe watching another version it might be more accurate uh, some of the more stuff from the book could flood back, but yeah. I just remember enjoying <laughs> reading Dracula and Frankenstein as a kid. You know, there are differences and there are changes made and I can understand why certain changes were made. Uh, of course, some of the early versions of like Dracula, some stuff obviously could not be shown. You know, even without the haze code, still, there's just, like, certain things, like, you just don't do uh, back in the 30s. So, or at least show. So, yeah. That's really all I have to say uh, about this particular film. So, I hope that was interesting. Hope it was worth something. I do not know. <clears throat> Obviously. What people will think about this but but hey if you've seen this f uh, version you know you can write what you think about this film if you've seen other versions and prefer you know others to this one you can say why <laughs> or why not perhaps if you don't <laughs> maybe you think this is the best version uh regardless you're absolutely uh <clears throat> you can absolutely uh write your thoughts in the comments if you want don't have to but you know it's very cool to see the different uh, transitions and transformations of dracula from old man to young man to like a wolf to a bat and transforming into like you know rats uh, very cool, I will say. So, uh, yeah. Please take care. Have a great uh, day. Have a great weekend. And I hope uh, next week will be great. And uh, we are getting closer to Halloween. So, yeah. Till next time, uh, make sure to take care. <laughs>